Welcome back guys, today we're making dead beams, so we've got a template here, so let's see how we're going to do this. So to make our deck beams, we are going to be using Iroko. We've got loads of Iroko and we have to thank Terry for helping us out with all the woods for the deck beams. So thank you so much, Terry. So we've got all these Iroko boards, but first, before we can do it with them, we need to make a template. So we're trying to work out how to make our form. Now, our beam of our boat is 4.8 meters wide. So it's going to be quite a big form that we need to make. So here's the template that we took off the boat the other day. So now we need to work out the actual radius and get that marked out. Right, so if I had to explain what I've been doing, it wouldn't make sense because it doesn't even make sense to me. But what we've been doing is taking an average of our template that we made of the boat. We know that's right. We know it fits the forward bulkhead. We've taken an average of it. There is ever so slightly variances in it. So we've been marking it. Which ones do we like? Moving it down. Does that match the next one? Does it match the next one? So what we've now done is transferred the measurements from this onto this whiteboard. But that's going to give us our top radius because obviously we mark this against the underneath of the deck, so the very top of the beam. So that's what these lines represent here. These ones are crossed out, the ones we didn't like. So what we're going to do now is clamp this to that, then we're going to draw a line on it, and then what we need to do is then work down from there to get our underneath radius. Because the way we're doing the template, have we got a, our, our form? So. Our form is going to be made with the radius that we need, but it has to be the bottom radius and not the top radius, which is a mistake a lot of people make. Because if we made this now with the line of the top radius, but that's the bottom of the beam, so by the time it's come up, it won't be accurate. So we need to now work on our template and work down and get the actual bottom radius. So then when we do laminate them all up, finally it will come to the top radius that we need. Bit complex. We've done a lot of head scratching today, even a lot, half of my hair has gone. Um, <laughs> but we're getting there. What's happened to your hair? Was well, it a grinder incident? It, it wasn't. <laughs> I, decided, <laughs> I decided to get rid of all the epoxy and paint and sealant and that's what I was left with. Do you feel lighter now? I do. I feel like I've missed my flat. <laughs> I feel like I've lost my identity. Uh, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the big flat is gone. So it shouldn't stick in epoxy and stuff anymore. Yeah. No risk of it getting stuck in any drills, even though I've never done that in 15 years working with power tools. But you know. Right. Less hair talk, more template making. So here's the question. Let's say we did it on the wrong radius. Would you even notice? Because it's such a... We was getting how many metres? We get like 20 metres down the path, won't we? Well, yeah. There's 100 mil difference. We made... So they are. This is the bottom radius, very rough. And this is the top radius. It'd be helping <laughs> me bench was flat. And actually... Yeah, exactly. It's like basically the same. Because it's that much of a, a, yeah. a, a shallow curve, isn't it? So I don't think it'll really matter about that much difference in the radius. That much? I think it that would. That much. I don't think it will over 20 metres or whatever it was, but we need it right, don't we? So, Right, now I've got all this clamped up now on our favourable marks. I'm just going to draw that. We're going to cut that. And then we're going to use this as our... Thingy. I don't know what we're doing, but we're doing it. <laughs> so you can tell just over this short distance um, how much it changes. And bearing in mind this is only, what, two metres? We've got to go five metres, so... Yeah. Right, so now we need to put the marks on for the bottom radius and get that worked out. So our deck beam is 100 mil deep. So I've cut a little 100 mil block. So now I'm just gonna put it on our original mark. And just keep going through. Now 
and then we can join all the dots up together and that'll be our bottom radius So now the question is, this needs to be cut out. Yeah. Needs to be cut out perfect. Yeah. Who is the best on the jigsaw? Yeah. It's probably correct that. Right, okay, I'll cut it out. Important cut. <laughs> Just <laughs> you shouldn't be playing with me here. <laughs> So I'm just double checking the bit that I've just cut off. Checking it against our old template. There you go. Yeah, I'll screw that. Okay, so that's the top line, as you can see, all follows it. And the bottom lines us. Then the day we're replacing as well every single beam. So provided all the beams are the same, it doesn't really matter, does it? We could have like we could make it into a flat couldn't we if we really wanted to, but it'll hold water, so yeah, as long as we Cool. cool, so I need to cut out about five more of them to make our template. Template. Form. 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 There you go. Form. Catch. <gasps> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Right, so we've got all this laid out on the floor now beautifully. We've just spent ages lining it all up, so what we don't want to do is kick it. So we're using these boards here to basically square it all off. We've got our template now. It's as close as we possibly can get it. Um, we've spent half a day trying to trying to get this straight, haven't we? In fact, yeah. more than half a day. Four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw this out, then we're going to slide it down on it, keep it on the line, slide it down and keep it on the line, and then vice versa. Hopefully that works. Did I'm you... using pencil and not Sharpie to mark it, because when you mark something with Sharpie, yeah. it's like got a five mil line. There is the pencil line's a lot thinner, so you get a better line to follow when you're jigsawing. You just cut the line out, can't you? Yeah. So now... So if we go halfway-ish, so you line, you line your end up, okay. and I'll line my end up. Okay, so now I'm going to send this down, send this line down there now. Are you happy with that? It's got a few little, about two mil variants, isn't it? Yeah. We won't stress over two mil. No. The bank might, but we won't. <laughs> Okay. You want to think our boat is that wide and curvy? I <laughs> know, yeah. My right arm needs a rest, so I think I'll use my left arm now. Right, so there's it all laid out now together on the floor. Looks pretty good actually. So now we need to make lots more of them now. 
to stack it up because we're going to make the form about 60 mil um, the beam is only going to be 51 but we're going to go a bit wider because there is one beam which is about 60 mil so we need to make some more but now we need to do like a brickwork pattern so we retain the strength I can vouch for Gemma that I wasn't her trumping and it was her shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of... <laughs> trying to do like a nice cinematic shot and it just sounds like a part of it. <laughs> Doesn't look like much of a template at the minute. Mm. Does it? What, no, not a template. What was the words we were using? A form. A form. Mm. Doesn't look like much of a form. No. We so, need to get the terminology correct, don't we? Mm, otherwise we get shouted at. <laughs> so... We've got the top piece with our curve on it. And all these now we're just... Random off cuts. Okay, so we're gonna cut it back with the circular saw. And I then... I was pointed to by Simon. And then we're gonna router it mm. so they're all the same. So literally it'll be one piece, 60 mil thick. And... Um, then we're going to cut some holes in, aren't we, for our yep, clamps? For lightness. And then we're going to add some lightness. Yeah, because it is heavy. <laughs> it's but a big lump. We should have actually filmed us trying to pick that up. <laughs> so obviously it's over like five metres long, <laughs> wobbly. So yeah, it took us quite an, an effort to get it yeah. onto the bench, didn't it? So we're sort of hoping she loses a bit of weight when we cut all this off. Yeah. And what I think we might have to do, we might have to sacrifice some oak or something like that and put some battens down it. Just to strengthen it up. Yeah, a bit. and also it'll keep it up when we're. Yeah, because it needs to be able to stand up yeah. on its own. Yeah. Okay, right, let's carry on forming our form. It's like so close to cutting all the way through, but not. One day we will own a saw that will cut through surrender. Have you ever noticed everything? It does. Not it's always that much. I know. Why saws never big enough? So a few people have been saying lately that we make these videos for money. So this video, that's about £200 worth of material there just to make the template. That router bit was £21. <laughs> all the Oroco is worth over £1,000 that we're doing all the death beams out of. Um, and we don't earn a fraction of that for each video that we make. So. When I get comments like that, it always makes me laugh because I think if you knew the actual truth of the cost of everything, um, we would be financially better off not doing the boat and working in McDonald's. If you are interested to see how much do we make on YouTube, uh, there's a website called Social Blade. Go over to Social Blade, search Ship Happens UK, and you will see. So everyone who thinks that we make a load of money on YouTube, go and do it. Go and have a look. And then think to yourself, is that a wage for two people? Plus the very, very high material costs that we have to do surrender. And yeah, do that before anyone wants to comment thinking that we do these to make money. Go and do your research because I wish we made money.
never look at stuff and just get like a massive edge? You're not going to write subscribe now, are you? No. <laughs> I've got the massive edge to do like a snow angel. <laughs> 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 Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> most most YouTubers write a subscribe and it don't look <laughs> Jeremy Jeremy can't say all Jeremy that. Does Dust Angels. Dust Angels. Right, will you blow me off? No. It's your job. Oh the air blower, yeah okay. <laughs> little things to the form. I'm making some uprights that we can screw on because obviously we can clamp down but just we haven't got that many clamps <laughs> so I'm thinking for when we layer all the layers up in the form if we have these like that then it'll keep them all in line but what, the square then as well, it? yeah. over. But what I'm gonna do last time that we um, when we made the breast tuck Remember, we got it stuck to the form, and you guys give us some really good advice to use parcel tape because it doesn't stick to parcel tape. So because we're going to have loads of oozage out the sides, I'm going to put parcel tape on these and also on top of the form, and then that should make it easier when we get the beam out after it's been glued up. Do that. <laughs> so there we go. There is our massive form. Like, I thought, how far back do I have to stand to get it all in shot? <laughs> There you go, they work out quite well to hold them all in place, don't they? So, we've got our Iroko that we're using for our deck beams. So now what we've got to do is um, stop giving yourself splinters. Get it planed up, get it cut down to 60 mil strips and get it cut to length. And then, and then we can make our first deck beam. So that is our first deck beam. Ooh. Obviously, it's not finished. Well, do it. A couple of screws. Okay, let's pump it up. Yep. So you use 
said to a pop too, and it's just all oozing up. So we've just got some levelling up to do. We've got a good amount of oozage. So now they're all clamped down and clamped level side to side. Yay! Unfortunately, I'm to use grip to tighten the clamps up because I've got that much glue everywhere. <laughs> I don't know if it went off, but. That's going to be one strong death beam, isn't it? Yes. It's amazing how many clamps you need when you're doing something like this. I know, there's not enough. We now. definitely didn't have enough, did we? I think we definitely have enough glue in there. I think that's a perfect amount. Yeah, because if no, not unlike come out, you'd be worried that you'd have dead dry joints. Mm. Right, so it's been 24 hours now. It's all nicely hardened up. So, question is, will it come off the form? So, let's see if we can get it off. Check that out. A bit heavier than I thought. Right, so it went really well. So what I've just done, I've just had a good tidy and I've just turned it round to make sure it still fits. Because if our calculations were wrong, then it probably wouldn't fit either end, would it? It'd be like a different curve on one end, and it fits beautifully. The whole thing is slightly bounced, but it says about three mil on either end. So, 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 so she has tried to straighten herself out of it. But yeah, I'm well impressed with that. It's going to be a big, good, strong beam, isn't it? Right. So what we need to do now is sort of get it all cleaned up, basically clean up good enough so that we can then stick it through the plane and then we can get it all nice and thick because. At the moment, she's 60 mil wide. That was how, that was how wide our pieces were that we cut. Um, on the boat, it's 38 mil. I think we're going to leave them a bit a bit chunkier. I don't, I don't know why. Well, oh, it's going to be stronger, isn't it? So, yeah. So we're basically going to plane down to a sensible thickness that it's all nice and flat. Um, and then we might end up varnishing these and leave leaving them. A laminated wood but that'll be quite nice but that's in the future right so let's get it all sanded down and so it's good enough to go through the plane Right, so we're relatively flat now. Obviously, you can see like this one's a bit lower than these ones. 
Um, but we'll get that when we stick it through the thicknesser. Right, so Gemma's away at the moment. She's gone to the Southampton Boat Show I'm following on Friday. So I'm on my own for this, but I'm going to set up some stands and some rollers that we can send it through. I think it's going to be quite traumatic on the little plane, isn't it? Going through all this lumpy, bumpy epoxy. But I've got one side nice and smooth. I've taken all the big, the big chunks off, off this side. Let's see how she looks when she's all planed. Like a big rainbow, isn't it? That wasn't so bad. I thought it'd be a bit, a bit more difficult, but I think I'll give it like the final plane when, when me and Gemma were here, then we can control a bit better. But yeah, that went really well. All the work that we do on Surinder is all made possible with the support of our amazing Patreon supporters and Coffee Monthly members. Without their support, this project wouldn't be possible. So, thank all of these people on the screen, as without them, these videos wouldn't be possible. And if you want to join our Patreon or monthly members on Coffee and get early access to our videos and help support the project, we would be so grateful. Until next time, see you next week.